My name is Les Greeley. I am the principal software lead for the Integrated Combat Systems Department um, here at Dalgren. I've been a Dalgren employee since um, 2000. And originally, I'm a mathematician. That's my degree. But my career took these weird paths, and so now I do software. So um, as the principal software lead, what that means is we're trying to explore new ideas that are coming out in industry and stuff, and we want to um, apply them across the portfolio. So what I do is I make sure that we're doing good rigor, that we're putting out good code, that we're using good processes, but I'm also trying to modernize and continually push the envelope. And I do that for the whole department. My grandfather worked here, both my parents worked here. Um, I have an aunt and a great aunt that worked here. So I joke after college, I, m I moved away for a few years. Then I came home and went in the family business. This is just what we do. So I've been here for 54 years now, if you will. Growing up, I knew this was always my path. I mean, it just, it just, it kind of was. When I, I was a little boy, there was a TV show called Emergency. It was about these LA County firefighters, paramedics. It was my favorite TV show. And I used to take my, my toy cars and I would crash them and I would get my fire truck and my ambulance and I would come rescue everybody. It was all I ever wanted to do. So that's why when I turned 16, I, I started volunteering. That's, you had to be 16 to start riding an ambulance and, and that's what I did. I was a paramedic before I came here. Um, but there was one certification that I wanted to get. It's um, flight paramedic certification. So, you know, bad things happen. Oh my gosh, they had to call the helicopter in. There's a special certification you need. It was something I really wanted just for me. I'm, I'm not gonna fly, but I, it was, I really wanted the education. I wanted this certification, even on ground ambulances allows me to do some things. Now that I work in the hospital, allows me to do some things there. So I really wanted to do this. So I would work, you know, nine hour days when I was here. And then that would give me some time that I could take off to go to class. You know, it went up through the department head. Hey, I'm, gonna, I'm going to do this. There's going to be an interruption. Is that okay? And they were all very supportive and allowed me to do that, it was just a dream of mine. When you're here, work is really important. Those 40 hours, you should be focused. Our mission here is critical. What we do absolutely matters. But that 41st hour, go home. You, you should not be here. Work, you should work in order to live, not live in order to work. So Les and I have known each other a long time. Um, and as I reflect back on that, it's shocking to me how long um, we have known each other. In that time, we have evolved in our own um, professional careers, our personal lives. Um, I myself have two kids, and um, in the time that I've known less, as an example, they've um, gone from pretty close to elementary school through graduating high school. Demonstrating to others that having that balance um, is important. It is um, how we can be our best work selves, is to make sure we are maintaining those balances. Dogren is very um, supportive of that work-life balance. I think there are really high expectations for people who work at Dahlgren, so I think that that is a given and, and that you um, need to be at the top of your game, you need to be technically astute, you need to be all of those things, but it is also recognized that even though you're a SME in this area, you've got to be able to take time off. I went to Africa on a, a medical trip, which again, the base allowed me, I took two weeks, peaced out and went to Africa on this trip, you know, and, and the base was very supportive and very excited. I want to do medical missions after retirement. That's what I want to spend my, my retirement time doing is that kind of thing. It changed my life. It was absolutely incredible. But I'm talking to the doctors that were part of the team. What classes can I take? What books can I read? You know, what can I do to be better at this kind of medicine? Every single doctor that I asked that question to said, go get a job in the emergency room. It is the best prep and training for what we're doing out here. So I came back and there was only one hiring part-time paramedics at the time and it was Stafford Hospital and I went there and I'm, I'm there for the education so that I can then go do, that's, I'm, and I'm having a blast. I mean, working at Stafford is just incredible. It, it's just been the best experience. In the hospital, I feel like I'm a part of a team. I feel like, particularly when you know it's crazy busy and things are going going badly, and there, there's all kinds of people. But what you did today mattered. You know, I, I went to work and I did something that really changed people's lives. Whether it's the patient or sometimes you're you're treating the family is who that's your that's who you're caring for, right? And uh, you just you walk out, you walk out to your car at the end of the shift, and you're like, I did something today, and it was cool. I'm I'm part of this team. When, you, when you're in those moments, you are invited into people's lives at their most vulnerable. You know, they're hurting, they're scared, you're coming into the home, you're coming into their vehicle, you're coming, whatever, whatever it is. What an incredible honor that is to be allowed and invited to step into the lives at that moment and meet their need. 
the citizens of our community depend on me to do my job, to be there when they call, and to do my job extraordinarily well so they and their families can be healthy. And hopefully they sleep well at night knowing that there's people here doing, doing that for them. It is such a joy to, to come here. I love my job at Dabber, don't get me wrong. It is, it's an incredible career. It's been, I've had just an absolute blast. But this is like my release. You know, it's, um, it's, it's fun, it's my, my, my passion. I've been wanting to do this since I was a small child. And um, I, I'm learning so much. Their medical skills are top notch. And it makes me really want to raise my game up to be even better. So it really helps my, my emotional and f fulfilling myself, right? Because I get to do my career at Dalvin, which is very important to me. I love the mission. We talk about my family legacy. I get to do both, you know, find your passion in life and have this amazing career at Dalvin. Both organizations have been great in allowing me, Stafford, the shift I work at Stafford, nobody has ever worked this shift before. And it works great for me with my job at Dalgren. I've been doing it for a year and a half now, and it's worked great. And they've actually started looking to find other paramedics to fill similar shifts. So they've been really flexible in understanding my job. And, and I can call up and, hey, um, turns out I have to go to California next week. And they've been very understanding. For a day to day, we look out for our patients, making sure that they're taken care of and that they receive excellent care by all staff members. Uh, but we also wanna make sure that our staff is satisfied in their role and that we assure that they are comfortable. Right, right Les? <laughs> so, yeah. Having Les on our team, I cannot tell you um, enough. Like he, he comes with a positive energy, positive attitude. Um, he's always joyful. I mean, he's here really because he enjoys what he does. I, I can't say enough about him. He's a pleasure to work with and it makes our day. He comes in the office and he's always like, hey, how are you? And are you having a good day? And he, he checks in with us too, which is really, um, it's joyful to have somebody like him. So challenges being a paramedic. I'm sitting here, we're talking, we're watching the game, whatever's happening, and then five minutes from now, I might be doing CPR. I might be helping somebody from a car accident. I might be treating a stroke victim. I might deliver a baby. I might, who knows what the thing is that I'm gonna be called to do. And there's a little bit of fear factor, am I gonna be up to the task? You know, that's the, that, that, that seems to be kind of a universal thing. You're always fearful, and I know for myself, even after 30 some years, when you hear the tones drop, I get little butterflies just for a second, Oh my gosh, is this the one? And am I going to be able to do it? The way you overcome that is you train. You, you spend your downtime training. Another challenge is sometimes the personal aspects. So, so for me, blood, guts, that, that doesn't bother me at all. You can do anything you want to do. And I got lots of great, awesome stories. None of that bothers me. What gets to me is the people. You need some help. I have done CPR on babies before that I knew were not going to make it back. This baby, the nothing was going to save this baby. But I got mom and dad sitting there. They're gonna live with this moment for the rest of their lives. They're gonna say, you know what? Those guys that came in here, they did everything they could possibly do. It just didn't work. My patient at that point was not the baby, it was mom and dad. What mom and dad needed to see me do is bust my tail to save their baby. And I did. I did everything I possibly could. And, and I don't consider that wasted treatment. Sometimes you do things because the family needs, needs that moment. Maybe kids don't bother you until you have kids. And now once you have kids, every kid that you treat is yours. You can't focus on emotions. You have to put it aside for a minute to do the job. And then you can't take it home with you. There's, um, we see things and experience things that normal people don't see and experience. And kind of related to that, one of the challenges that I do have is sometimes I can go into robot mode and turn off my feelings. You don't get to pick and choose your feelings. You feel or you don't feel. But in order to feel the good, you have to also feel the bad. You let your guard down so that you could feel the good and then the bad snuck in when you, when you weren't looking. But the, the opposite side, if you guard yourself so much against the bad, now you can't feel the good. So having those feelings is a good thing. When I went to Africa, I went to Tanzania. And Tanzania is, without question, the most beautiful place I've ever been. I mean, there, there was times where literally I, I had to sit down because I was so overwhelmed by the vista or just the experience. But the people of Tanzania are just the most beautiful people you've ever met. They're just happy 
loving people. And there were situations, I, I remember looking around and I thought, took this picture and put it here in the States, I would have been terrified. But there, it wasn't, it wasn't the case at all. I never met a single Tanzanian, not one, who talked about what they don't have. They celebrate what they do. I met this one cattle farmer when I was there, and his house may be twice the size of my office, maybe. It was sticks and mud, grass roof, dirt floor. I mean, the poor man, he's got nothing, right? He found out I was from the States. He felt so bad for me, having to live in a place where there was, where there was problems. And I mean, it just really, you know, the, the, the concept, celebrate what you've got. Stop focusing on what you don't have and celebrate on what you do. It's really easy here to always be chasing the next brass ring. And what you find out is after you get that ring, there's another ring and there's another ring and there's another ring. Sometimes I was so focused I was going, I forgot to enjoy the beauty of where I was. Take a minute and just enjoy where you are and enjoy the peace and the beauty around you and enjoy what you have. Don't judge anybody on their situation or where they have. Love them as a person, love them for their needs and let's celebrate what we have. You're not just a mathematician or just a physicist. There's, there's something more to you. You can't save the world, but maybe you can save the room and then move on to the next room and the next room and eventually we'll save the world, right? But you can't do that if you're not focused on the stuff that matters. There's the pictures that matter to me. Some of these are older, my, my son and my daughter, and then this is my granddaughter, Rory, who's gonna be three here in just a little bit. So these are older pictures. My, my children, these footprints, those are my son's footprints when he was in preschool. This is who I am. You know, that's what I do and that matters, but this is who I am and being true to who you are and, and keeping that balance, that's what defines your life. Don't be reactionary to your time, be intentional with your time. If you're making an intentional choice, do this or do this, I think you'll find a lot of joy in life. And, and now you're not, life didn't happen to you, you owned it. And it, it's, it's who you want to be.